Hello and welcome to the Kamla Show. We bring you interviews and conversations with technologists, entrepreneurs, filmmakers, and other newsmakers from in and around the San Francisco Bay Area. My guest today is Aman Khanna. He is a co-founder and the chief product officer of College Feed, a Mountain View-based startup right here down the street. And what College Feed uh, does is helps students and employers right. find the right match right. so that you get the right candidate, the company gets the right candidate, and the student gets the right job. Right, right. Uh, okay. Exactly. So College Feed essentially is, we like to call it a social platform that makes it very easy for students, employers, and career centers at universities discover and connect with each other. Okay, so you use the word social platform. What is social about it? Right, so so essentially if you look at it, traditionally the way in which students and employers have connected with each other has been traditionally via job boards where the employer would post an opening on, on one of the job boards and the students would go look for it or they would go to a career center and the career center would tell them that these are the employers who are coming. Or you uh, go to, to the, the company's uh, job portal. Or you go to the company's job board, right? So the entire process so far, we believe, has been a very impersonal process. And we envisioned that changing, essentially. Mm. So, so we have done away with the concept of a job posting, essentially. We, we enable direct connection between an employer and a student looking for a job. And typically, this, the school is a facilitator uh, between the two. So break it down. So how does it work? So if I log into College right. Feed, I'm a student, mm -hmm. say at Stanford, right. which is where you went. Yes. So how does it work? Right. Uh, so the way it works is that on the student, so we'll start with the student side, right? So for the student, it, it's a completely free platform. They sign on, they create an account, and they create what we call a College Feed profile, right, which basically showcases all that you have to offer. And this profile is is tuned or the way it has been structured is to showcase the talents and the work of a college student. So college students typically do not have a lot of work experience to show. It doesn't make sense to ask them, tell me the five jobs that you have done so far. So the kind of thing, things we ask them is, tell me about the what you want to do in life, mm. what kind of career do you aspire for, and then give me proof as to why we, you think you would be a good fit for that kind of job. Mm. So tell me about the class projects that you have done. Mm. Uh, tell me about the courses you have taken. And then finally, way down, we ask you if you have any relevant work ex experience, do list that. So anyway, so so that that's how the profile is created. And there, there's, there's a lot of structured walkthrough that we do with the students. And it's all been built into the product. Structured which, walkthrough. So when I'm building my profile, I get right. prompted by you or by a human being? No, it's 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 by the Automatic. system, right? Okay. So whenever you're filling out a section, it actually uh, it actually tells you what to fill out in there. And many times, students need a lot of hand holding, right? Mm. Just because they're so inexperienced. So we show them examples of what other students have done. We tell them what is a good about me statement. How what kind of classes should I talk about? One of the things we emphasize a lot is that everything has to tell a consistent story. Right, so so if you say that you want to work in, uh, let's say the alternative energy uh, uh, industry or uh, do that kind of a job, tell me what are the relevant classes you have taken, what are the relevant projects you have take, done, and not don't just tell me that this is the relevant project I have done, but also can you point me to a link, right, uh, which actually showcases that project to an employer. You know, that so anyone can tell me that I am Steve Jobs. Well, then if you are, show mm. me the iPod. Mm. Right? Mm. So, so a lot of emphasis on, on the samples of work. So once you build this uh, portfolio, the student builds the right. portfolio, it becomes available. It becomes available. And then you then push it as a feed. Right, but there, there is actually uh, an intermediate step, right? So not everyone who creates a profile gets presented to the employer. So oh, we actually, why not? It's, it's an acceptance-based program. So what we do is typically when a student applies, there's about, we have about a 31% acceptance rate. And the reason what- Only one third? Only one third so far. We would like to accept everybody. The terms are completely open. You have to do a really good and acceptable job at telling your story in that profile. And we have algorithms and we have human curation which actually tell you that 
the way we your profile has been built whether it is it does tell a really good job of representing you to an employer because a lot of our credibility to an employer depends on the kinds of profiles that we present so you're doing the job of a recruiter what a recruiter would do you know when they get a job requirement from a company they would wet their resume and mm -hmm. then they would tailor the resume of the candidate right. you know to match the employer's uh, requirement is that what you're doing in some ways uh, yes and no. So essentially one of the things that we don't do is that we, we do not tailor the, require, the, the profile of the candidate. We just tell them the best way to tell their story very well. Mm. Right? We, we do not tailor any of the profiles to the employer's requirement because that is misrepresenting a candidate to the, to the employer. What we do want to make sure is that a lot of the kids are not very, very experienced in telling their story very well. Right, and and there are simple things that you can can do. So so essentially, we 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 don't reject anybody. So we if this profile is not up to the mark, we tell we waitlist them, and mm. uh, we waitlist them. We say that these are the things you need to improve in your profile. Go back, and uh, when you have updated your profile, come. We'll consider you again. And many it works like a charm mm. because nobody likes to be waitlisted. Right? Mm. They they mm. know that they are worthy, but still they are, have been waitlisted. So. It goes back, and then then the second time it comes around, the profile is beautiful, and then then we accept it, um, and and we pre start presenting it to the employer. So you said it is ninety percent uh, percent algorithms, and uh, ten percent uh, human curation. Right. What do you mean by human curation? So automatically, so once uh, me the student, I mm -hmm. filled out the profile, right. and I got accepted. Uh, what do you do then? Where is the human curation part to it? Right. So when once you get accepted, even in the process of acceptance, we do review manually. So so just to back up a little bit, when we actually started, a lot of the most of the work that we used to do was manual. Right. We we used to review a profile and then we used to uh, go back, tell actually send an email back to the student that you know this is what you need to do now. Over time, we have discovered algorithms and rules. We've basically baked our own expertise into the the algorithms so that we are able to scale right we there, there's on, only so many students and employers we can serve by doing it manually so we've gotten to a point where we've applied uh, algorithms we've baked in our intelligence and we've put in now even machine learning algorithms where it automatically learns from the previous classifications but we still have not done away with the manual curation what we do is a process of wetting the results of the algorithm just to make sure that none of the students who should have been matched to an employer are missed out or a student doesn't get matched to a wrong employer because we care a lot about our credibility with the employer when we present a student typically if we present 10 students to an employer employer wants to talk to four to five out of those so that's a pretty good hit rate if you compare to what the three percent response rate that you get from a job board. Hmm. So what about uh, the other end? So uh, one end of the equation is the student. Right. At the other end is are the companies right. that are your uh, paying clients. They, they right. pay for your service. Right. Which is w what you what is the service you're providing is these resumes that you're wetted which you think would match the profiles of certain hmm. kinds of jobs that these various companies would have. Right. Array of companies. That is correct. Okay. And do you, you charge these companies? Is that what you do? So we have uh, a freemium model. So there is a base level of service uh, that is free uh, for companies. And then there are value added tiers. So, so as a freemium, so if I was a startup or if I wanted mm -hmm. to use your service, what would I get as a freemium? Right. So, so as a, for a, the base level product that is free, it essentially allows you to sign on and search a portion of our resume book. Mm. We, we call this a resume book, which is a collection of student profiles. You can go and you can search. Uh, you can type in keywords. You can filter by school and so location. So just giving me a peek into it, but I can't touch it. I well, can't you, go. You and can recruiting. still touch it. You, you can still touch it. You can go contact the students. I oh. mean, it, you, you can do everything. But the thing is that you have to do all the work manually Got yourself. You. In, in, so there, there's, so you would still have to look through many, many profiles, and then you would have to, to shortlist. And in, in the premium uh, layer, so there, there are multiple premium layers. One of the services that we offer is actually a customized feed of students, where the employer comes and tells us, these are the kind of students I'm looking for. And then we have the algorithms pick out the right kind of students for them, and we do a manual vetting, and then we 
uh, we send over those profiles and that typically saves a lot of time for the hiring manager or the recruiter on the company side. So what has been the hit rate for uh, your can uh, for your clients? Typically when, uh, so hit rate is essentially what we, uh, uh, we measure uh, on our customized services. Uh, typically when we send a feed of uh, of candidates to uh, to an employer, uh, this typically consists of 10 to 15 candidates, which could potentially match their requirements. And we have seen, if we send a list of 10 candidates, it's it's not uncommon for them to ask to talk to four to five out of those. So that that we consider it to be a pretty good hit rate in our experience. So, and if if the client hires the candidate, do you get any kind of fee at that point? We do not. We, we do not. Uh, so take it's just a flat fee. Uh, it's just a flat subscription fee, uh, which enables you to receive feeds. We charge on a per feed basis. Uh, we we do not uh, charge on a, a per hire basis. We, uh, we we think that that's a model that's not uh, very scalable. Uh, one thing I should also mention is that another service that we offer to employers is we help them brand themselves in the college community right so so I was uh, you actually anticipated my question because I see. portals in some ways are disappearing nobody goes to mm -hmm. you know XYZ companies uh, right. job site and goes through because you know some jobs are categorized differently that is correct right so if I wanted to say get a writing job I could be in marketing I could be in tech writing I could be in uh, I don't know and maybe uh, some other uh, category or, uh, or of that company's mm -hmm. uh, job board. Right. So what you're doing is you're helping companies brand their job sites. That is correct. You're making them sexy. We are making ways. them. Yeah. We. Uh, yeah. That, that's a. Uh, that's the first time we have been described <laughs> like that. Well, uh, you, you, you're doing yes. some. You're tweaking their web. Uh, yes. Thing. So we, what we uh, essentially help them do is over the time over the uh, in our experience we have developed a lot of expertise in being able to understand a college student's mindset what is it what have you right. understood so in terms of in when when they consume information right they are used to consuming information in a very social way right they 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 like to interact with their friends on facebook they like to receive feeds of information they they like highly visual, beautiful looking pages that are easy to browse on mobile phones. Right now, most of the college students access the internet information primarily on their smartphones. Right? And, and there's a certain kind of a language. Nobody wants to, to read that, yeah, this is a 70,000 people company with great benefits and our founder went to, to such so and such school. So you're tailoring it for the new, for the millennials? We are tailoring it for the millennials. Uh, we are picking up just the right information that they are looking for. Bite size. The bite size information. We are we are presenting it in a in a very visual, beautiful way, right? With videos and pictures and beautiful fonts that the student gets attracted to. And we are making it highly optimized for access on mobile devices. Okay. Do you have an app? We do not uh, have an app per se in, in the, uh, as in an app that you would download. Uh, we, most of the portions of our site, most of the pages are optimized to render beautifully on uh, mobile devices. So whenever a student or a, an employer for that matter accesses our site, it's, uh, it, it, we, we call it technically a responsive site. Hmm. So it detects. Uh, what is the kind of browser device. Yeah. or the device that you are accessing it from and it modifies the rendering so appropriately. It's, it's, so you've got that uh, responsive design. We have the responsive okay. design, yes. Okay. I want to quickly go back because we couldn't get this as a, as a, as a visual on, on our uh, screen, right. but I got this uh, here. How it works, what was interesting is you do something called uh, a company recommendation engine right for uh, the students right and what is that what is a company recommendation engine because right. you're collecting data mm -hmm. so I'm assuming in a, in, a, at a, in a very simple way when you're collecting data you're able to then dig into the data and find patterns yes yes uh, it's, it's exactly that so so just to give you an analogy and I mentioned that we, we are very we are a social platform that is millennial friendly. So millennials, uh, if you when they go and let's say, go to Netflix and watch a movie, next time they log in, they see because you watched this movie, these are the others that you sh you will likely it's be interested. It's what Amazon in. did. It's it's what what Amazon did. If you bought this product or you bought this book, maybe you should consider uh, but you're reading also this. tracking me. Y yeah, we are, and we, uh, we obviously with the with the user's permission, um, and others like you 
have right. purchased these items. So whenever a, a student signs up, we ask them to enter what are the top three types of interest areas and what are the top three companies that they would like to work for. And based on that information and based on the information that we have collected from students similar to this student, we present them with uh, recommendations about these are the other companies you should be looking at. For example, right, I mean, if, if you're interested in uh, variable computing and, and you, you obviously have heard of Apple, right, uh, you should probably consider Nest. As I mean, that Nest is ob obviously acquired by Google now. But, uh, you know, th those... So you offer them suggestions. We, we offer them which suggestions. Which they may not know. Which they may not know. That, you know, typically a student, whenever we survey students, we ask them, uh, tell me your top three companies. 80% of our student base who are in the tech uh, arena can't name a company outside the top 50. But guess what? In the Silicon Valley, there are like 200,000 startups, uh, small startups, mid-sized companies that you haven't heard for uh, heard of. We don't want you to miss that opportunity. At least want you to at least look at them. Maybe if they are doing some interesting work, it, it just just expands your horizon of possibilities. Mm. So so that's that's what the company recommendation engine does. Okay, so let's switch to the client side. How many clients do you have and have you broken uh, even because you got funding your last year? You got what, two million? We raised a couple of million dollars last year. And that last, was what, seed last fund? July. That was a seed round. Mm. Uh, to, it was Very large. large seed round. It was a large, uh, large seed round, but uh, so we, we actually started the company uh, way back in October of 2012. We bootstrapped it for so almost it's two years. Yeah, it's two years. Uh, we bootstrapped it almost for for the first eight to nine months. We got a significant amount of traction. We had uh, multiple paying customers, and we made it a point to delay the funding as long as we could, so that we could get more traction. And so by the time we we raised the round, we were actually fairly confident in our ability. To a, we, we had proven that this is a sustainable business model. This was a service that was useful to both students and employers, and there was demand. And so we believed that we were at a stage where we could do something that's larger than a typical seed round uh, in order to scale. And, and our investors believed in that as well. So it worked how out. Many, how many investors? Axel led the round? Axel Partners le led the round. Uh, mm. We had, uh, let me see, it's probably five to six angels, uh, Silicon Valley angels, uh, high profile people who invested, filled out the rest of the round. Hmm. So you wanted it that way, you wanted this hybrid model, uh, a well-known VC company and then some angels. Yeah, we, we, we like to have multiple investors. Uh, it also worked out that way because it was the largest round and uh, when, when you say that it's a seed round and uh, such a big valuation, then it, it's a good idea. What was the valuation? Uh, so that's something we, we, we're not talking about yet, but uh, uh, you, you know, when you say a seed round, and uh, actually I, I meant to say not valuation, but, but the, the size of the deal, mm. uh, $2 million, um, it's something that we felt comfortable having multiple investors, and I, I guess at that point of time, the, the investors themselves felt more comfortable having others uh, as part of the uh, band too. Mm. How long did it take for you to raise money? Raising money is never easy. Right. Uh, creating a new product is never easy. Yeah. So you have to find the balance. You know, there you are creating a startup, and you also have to raise money. Yes. How long did it take for you to raise money? So I think from the day you started pitching to the day you received, how many days? Right. It's it's an interesting question because you know there was not really a defined time when we actually could say that we started pitching. So. Almost from day one, uh, when 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 you, you co conceptualize the idea, you you're not formally fundraising, but we would go and talk to to basically everybody, including investors, just to get a sense of you know how much people are willing to invest. But I would say when when we were seriously in the market, um, uh, we raised it. Uh, we announced around in July 2013, so it was probably a good three to four months that it took us to to, to close to the round. Yeah. And how many doors did you knock? Wow. Um, let me think back. Uh, because th this is a very we, exciting we, time for startups. No, we, There's a lot of money. Yes. So we, we we spoke to pretty much everybody in our network. We sh would have spoken to at least like maybe 20 to 25 uh, people. People, yeah, mm. to, to companies. And uh, 
many times it, it there's interest, but it's not the good time. But many times it's not a right fit uh, for them. Many times it's not a right fit for us. How do you do a reset? You know, because as it is, it's very difficult to raise money, mm -hmm. even in the even if you're successful. So when you are building a company, I'm curious to know how do you do a reset? So supposing you went to you know, VCX in, on Sand Hill Road, and they say, yeah, you know, yeah, we like your idea, but you have funded somebody else. And right. then the next day you go to VCY, uh, right. and they say, well, you're not a good fit. How do you deal with that? How do you come back? How do you do a reset? Right, so it, it's a good... Um, do you it, take it's notes? A, how do you, so when you, finish a, uh, when you finish pitching a VC, what do you do? Do you and your uh, uh, co-founders sit and take notes and figure out what went wrong and what went right? Just so like I your think, students take notes. Yeah, that, that's a great question. Uh, that, that's a, actually a great question. So I think obviously that there's uh, it, it's a learning process, right? So we, we obviously we in the process we learned how to pitch. What what are the kind of things that are more interesting to investors? What are the kind of things that they look for? And uh, it, it's not so much of uh, resetting. It's because I don't think it's it, you, you can reset, right? There's a path that you're going when down. When I say reset, I mean your messaging has to be reset. Yes, I because, see. Because it's like, you know, you have to find the match, just like the student is trying to figure out, you know, there are jobs out there and right. the student has, a, so you have a product and you're looking for money. Yes. So that's what I'm saying, you know. So somebody may say, uh, you know, so what did you, when I say reset, it's like, did you change some words? Did you change the way your deck was arranged? Right. That's what I mean. So all that, yeah. So so all of that essentially. So when okay. our, every conversation is a learning conversation, okay. you, many times we realize that there are there are many questions that uh, when during the initial one or two conversations we realize there were some questions that we were not prepared to like to what? answer. Right. So so for example, we, we would do a business model that this is how we are go going to be a sustainable business, and then. Uh, they would ask for s some kind of calculations and they would ask for uh, for more justification, if you will, for more proof. Then you would go and do market research. They, they would ask for, what have you considered this segment of the market itself? So we, we would have considered like three, three different types of uh, directions in which uh, this could evolve, but we wouldn't have considered the fourth type. Of. So, so it, it does happen, it, it's a very common thing. Uh, and, and, and each and every conversation is a learning experience. One thing that we were very, very diligent about was actually capturing detailed notes of each and every conversation. And whatever made sense, every next conversation was an improvisation of, of the previous one. So were you hanging out at the Starbucks on Sharon Heights? <laughs> We did a lot of meetings in that one. We did a <laughs> lot of meetings. See, we, we basically tracked the Sandal Road uh, up pretty and much down. up and down. But and Axel down. is on University Avenue. <laughs> 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 so where did you go after the meeting? <laughs> <laughs> there's, there's, actually, there's, there's a Pete's right below the Axel office. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so you no, went but, there? No, we, we, we actually went to, to Axel's uh, office. And so most of the meetings were in the in the VC offices. Okay, okay. Yeah. <laughs> so how do you deal with uh, doing a startup and having a family? You know, you have a young family. Yes. And how do you balance? Because uh, creating a company is never easy. Yes. And, uh, you know, when you're creating a company, your family life, your personal life takes a toss. Right, it, it does. It takes a beating. It does. How do you deal with it? How do you have an understanding spouse? So do you make time to hang out with your family? How do you do that? Right. Yeah. So I think the biggest thing that has been uh, has has helped me in, if you will, balance. If if at all I have balanced, is that my my wife Tanu. She has been extremely supportive of this right from the day I I expressed interest in doing my own startup to even today. She is very very understanding, very encouraging, and many times. You know, she, even before I am willing to sacrifice the time, she she encourages me and says, you know, I know what's on your mind. Just go ahead. Don't worry. <laughs> there will be a time when uh, this will be well set. We can enjoy it that time. Uh, and and I know it's not easy, right? So so she has taken up most of the burden, if, uh, uh, most of the the work of uh, uh, taking care of the household, bringing up our son. Uh, I try to put in time where I can. I uh, try my best to do that. How many hours do you s typically spend? Do you have those crazy hours, uh, 20 hours, 18, yeah. 20 hours? Yeah, typically, I, I, mean, I, th I think the day starts, uh, you, you wake up at 6 o'clock, get on the email, and then basically do everything in, in the office by 9, and uh, generally come home uh, around 5.36, but then spend a couple of hours with family, and then 
again back to work for another four to five hours, six hours until you know. You, 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 there's no no such thing as have I finished my day's work. There's no nine to five. There's no nine to five. Okay. It's it's probably okay. like. My last question. I didn't ask you, but the most obvious one. Who came up with the idea for College Feed? So it it was very interesting. The uh, so after I graduated uh, from, from Stanford, Stanford, right? I want to start my own company. Uh, and uh, I, I must tell this that I actually came from India and uh, to study at Stanford. Uh, when I s started the idea with, with a lot of enthusiasm, I realized that odds were stacked up really high, right? So uh, I, I basically had invested all my savings in my Stanford education. I'd taken out a loan. Uh, I did not know a lot of people in the Valley. Not that doing a startup is easy by itself, but all these uh, odds were stacked up on the personal front against me, and I had a visa situation because, uh, so uh, so it, it was hard, and it was the easiest thing that I could have done was that I, I could have found a corporate job, and that that was what common sense would tell me, uh, except that I didn't want to do that. And so, then the idea was born. And and then yeah, I, I met up with Sanjeev, uh, my, uh, Sanjeev Agarwal, my, uh, my partner. And he said uh, when he graduated from MIT uh, many years ago, he, he lived exactly the same movie. And we realized that was a problem that a lot of students are going through and something that we cared about enough uh, for our own experiences and for our kids to invest a few years of our life in trying to solve that problem and make a difference. So that's how College Feed was that, born. That's, that's how College Feed was born. Aman, thank you so much. It came from a personal pain point. It did, it did, very, very personal. Okay, thank you so much. We wish you all the best. Thank you, Kamala. You know, and thank you for watching. If you missed any of our interviews, you can go to our YouTube channel and watch them. You can follow me on Twitter. My handle is at Kamla. And as always, thank you for tuning in. We'll be back again with another interview. Until then, goodbye.